you're going to be making a ton of video this year and as a business owner, you're either gonna hire out to find an editor or you're gonna do some of that editing yourself. Either way, I assume you didn't go to school for video editing like I did. So in this video, I'm gonna teach you some of the foundational video editing terms that you need to know to master your own video editing or if you're gonna hire a video editor to work for you. So stay tuned, it's Owen Video. Hey, I'm Owen at the Video Marketing School where we teach business owners like you the art and science of online video marketing. You're watching this video on YouTube where you can subscribe to the channel for a new tip each week on video marketing for your business. Okay, I wanna teach you some editing terms today because you really need to know these things. I I've found that in my, in my mastermind group and with my clients, I'll mention some of these terms and people are kinda like, what, what, you know, what are you talking about? And so we, we want you to know these terms so that when you hire an editor, you're, you're telling the editor what they want, right? They, what they understand. You're speaking to them in their terms. Uh, instead of saying, can you just do this thing where you make it like this and that and the other thing? You need to use the jargon uh, so that they know what you're doing. And this is gonna create better videos for you, number one. And you're gonna have a better relationship with your editor. Plus, if you're doing it yourself, when you go to Google and you, you type in like how to jump cut, you, you know, you'll find the training that you're looking for. Okay. Um, and you'll probably find it on our channel right here. So be sure to be sure to subscribe. Okay. Um, all right. So the first editing term that you need to know is jump cut. Okay. Jump cut. Now a jump cut is when you move from one frame to another okay without any transition there was no transition that moved it just jumped now we could use a transition and that would look like this okay and that was just a quick little little transition that that we can use so a jump cut is when you don't have a transition to blend you between the scenes and you want to use a jump cut most of the time if you're doing a talking head video so understand what jump cut is now that brings us to our second term transition Okay, a transition helps blend one scene with another. Okay, so for example, if we wanted to do a thing where I'm gonna go outside, go to a new location, we would probably wanna use a transition like this. And now you can see that I'm in a different physical location. You can also use a custom transition to move to B-roll like this. Now we're looking at B-roll, get it? We can easily use a transition again to take us back into the studio. And we're back in the studio. Now, as a note on using transitions for your video, all the video editing uh, softwares come with their own built-in transitions. But if you get a custom transition made like the one that you saw us use, it really helps to put your business apart and stand, you know, your business stands apart. And I'll, I'll talk about that later on in this video. Okay, the next video editing term that you need to know is zoom in or scale up. Now, I tend to say zoom in, but I think that the technical term would be to, to scale up. So when you zoom in, in the editing room, what you're doing is you're taking the footage that came from the camera and you're zooming it in like this, right? And then you can zoom it out or scale it down like this. Okay, so this is something that you would do in the editing room and you would tell your editor this, like you might, you might notice that there's long sections of you talking and what you want to do is sort of cut this video up and zoom in and zoom out to create a look of two different cameras. All right, this is why your editing terms are so important because you can take the first term jump cut and this, this next term, the zoom in and combine them to do the cut and zoom effect. Right, so now you can tell your editor, hey, during this section of speaking, I want you to do a cut and zoom effect where I'm sort of being zoomed in and zoomed out like this, okay? So zoom in and scale up. The next video editing term, I love this term by the way, this next one is a ripple delete, okay? A ripple delete. Oftentimes when you're making your video, there's gonna be these large, you know, chunks, these huge swaths of, of, of junk that you're gonna, edit out of your video and so you'll you'll have like you know usable stuff a whole bunch of non-usable stuff and then usable stuff 
Well, what a ripple delete or a ripple cut will do is it, it you highlight all the middle stuff and you select ripple delete and it will shrink all your footage, all your footage back together again. So you don't have to like delete it and then there's this big blank spot and you gotta drag all your footage over again for every single cut. That would just take forever. Um, so when you're using Adobe or Final Cut, you're gonna want to ripple delete. Okay, it's very important. You're gonna want to ripple delete or to ripple cut. In Camtasia, and I know so many of you are using Camtasia and we love them, you don't wanna use the ripple delete, okay? Because what it does when you ripple delete is it blends the footage. So in Adobe, you know, it'll it'll bump the footage up. You'll still have two, you'll still have two, you, you know, clips that you can separate and edit. What Camtasia will do is it will, when you ripple cut, is it blends them together. So that's one clip. And then you can't, you, now you can't color correct on this and you can't zoom in and zoom out on that one. So it's a little, it, it makes it a little bit challenging. So knowing what a ripple delete is and knowing how your editing system handles it is important. Okay, this next one's a big one, guys. You will save so much time on your videos, on your editing. And if you're hiring an editor, by the way, saving time means saving money, okay? So you wanna be saving time on your editing. And that is copy attributes, copy attributes. Now. When you copy a clip in your editing program, um, you're copying the attributes. You're copying where it is on the screen, any filters it may be uh, that may be on it. And so the idea is you can copy there, you can dial in one, one clip, dial it in really, really well, and then copy the attributes, highlight all the clips that you want to apply that look towards, and then paste attributes. Okay, so knowing that you can do that is going to help you move along in the process because you don't, you might, you might dial like just maybe you just like edit the frame just a little bit and then you got to go to the next frame and do the same thing and then do the same thing. Copy and paste the attributes. Uh, really, really easy thing to do. And so that'll save you a ton of time. Okay, editing terms you need to know B roll. Now, this is a big one, and I think we all kind of know what B roll is, but just in case. Uh, B-roll is when you cut away to footage that is not you talking anymore. So we're cutting away to B-roll footage right now. And then now we're bringing it back. We're coming back to me in the studio where you've got your A-roll, right? Your main role, right? So your B-roll footage is something that goes on top of your main footage or your A-roll. So typically what happens is your A-roll provides the voiceover. Your A-roll provides sort of that foundation and then your B-roll goes on top of that to help tell the story. Now, in most cases, B-roll is footage that is supporting what you're saying on screen, but it doesn't always have to be. And B-roll often is video footage. Uh, it's video footage, and it may be photos that have been sort of um, animated to move a little bit, and that, that could be cool as well. The next editing term that you need to know is keyframe. Now, keyframe is actually a thing. When you're keyframing something, that's when you're moving it across the screen. You might be creating movement on the frame one frame at a time. That's called keyframing, right? So where you move it and then you create a keyframe and you move it again and you're essentially telling your editor, you know, from here to here to here. However, you might want to tell your editor, hey, I need you to keyframe the background so that it moves in a circle right? Or you might say, I need, I need you to animate the background. Or if you want to animate your background, you can do that by keyframing. So for example, take a look at these, um, these photos that are on your screen. Now, uh, these are images that we made for our Instagram uh, stories to promote the show that we do on Facebook. And what we did is we asked our editor to keyframe the background or to animate the background. Now, obviously animate has like all of these different terms. Animate sort of insists that you have some, some like bigger talents, but keyframe says, oh, okay. So it's a simple way to move something on the screen. All right. The next uh, editing term you need to know is called an L cut. An L cut is when I hear your voice before I see you. Okay. We, we see this in movies like good afternoon class. Welcome to your first flying lesson. Do you really have the scar? So that's what an L cut does. An L cut is, is just so you, you, you want to hear the voice before you move into the next scene. And this can be very, very powerful for, for telling story. Okay. The next editing term you need to know is voice over, but more commonly referred to as a VO, a VO or a voiceover is when you are seeing one image, but hearing 
something else. And, and usually a voiceover means it's something that you recorded separately. So we might want to go film uh, at a bee farm, right? We, we go to film a bee farm. Right now, the, it's kind of like B-roll, right? Get it? But I could also add a voiceover that sounds something like this. Notice the bees gathering around and working through the hot summer day. That would be more like a, more like a, a voiceover. And by the way, if you're a videographer, okay, and you're out there doing videos for people, then offering voiceovers for their videos is huge. A lot of people hate how they sound on video. Okay, and the final editing term that you need to know, video branding elements. You absolutely need to know what video branding elements are. As a business owner, you absolutely need your own video branding elements package that has, you know, all of your branded company stuff in it. Video branding elements are digital overlays or special effects that are made separate from your video, but can be added into your video. Okay, so with the video branding elements, you could do like a lower third like this. Um, you could do a custom transition like this right here, right? Uh, you could also have a full screen graphic that, that pops up on your screen and allows you to put some text um, on the screen, some bullet points or, or added figures. You need to be able to, to tell your editor, add my lower third here, and your lower third is a video branding element. You need to be able to say, add my custom intro here, right? Your custom intro is a video branding element. In fact, there are five video branding elements that every business needs to have. And if you wanna know what those five are, then check out the video that's on your screen right here. I cover these in great detail and I also provide you some resources on where to get video branding elements for your company. If you wanna learn more about editing great video, how to do it yourself or hire someone, go watch this next and then subscribe to the channel. You don't wanna miss what's coming up next week. I'm Owen and I'll see you there.